Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for pulling out 10k from our joint account without telling my wife first? I, male 37, am currently dealing with a horrible situation. My dad was admitted to the hospital and is in need of a heart surgery that he should have gotten months ago. He's already dealing with complications and his cardiologist recommended the surgery sooner. Both my wife and I work. We have a joint account that we both use, but she contributes more because she has been saving up to renovate the house. She knows about my dad's condition and we both discuss the possibility of giving my family money to help with the cost of the surgery. She told me, that I needed to do all I can to help my dad. Last week, I was able to pull out 10k from our account and put it into my family's account, then I told them about it. My wife found out after she contacted the bank the next day, not giving me the chance to tell her myself, as if she was checking to see if I took any money from the account, and she blew up on me when I got home after visiting my family. She called me a thief and a liar, which was a shock for me and I was really hurt by that. Especially when she told me I needed to support my family. She told me that I shouldn't have given my family 10k, saying it was a lot, and that she now can't renovate the house with the money left in the account. She said that I threw away the hard work to save up money, and kept lashing out on me the entire day. She's expecting me to return the money, saying she was the one who contributed more, and that my family should start thinking of fixing their own problems instead of asking for money. Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole. Why didn't you talk to her about it? 10k is a huge amount to spend without talking to your spouse. I'm betting you knew she would be pissed and did it anyway. Also, supporting your family means being there, not draining your joint account. Why can't your dad take on some debt? Why does it need to be prepaid? Did you discuss your dad paying it back? Have you talked with your wife about what luxuries you, personally, will go without until you have the money to renovate like she saved for? Not giving me the chance to tell her myself. I'm just text her or ask ahead of time. He's acting like he needed a week to talk to her or something. Also, you're right about the dad taking on the debt. Medical debt sucks but it's interest free. You're the a-hole. $10,000 is far from chump change, and when your wife said, do what you need to do, she probably didn't think that meant you were taking $10,000 from your savings that's supposed to be for your immediate home family, especially with home renovation looming. This is why joint savings accounts require constant communication. She has every right to be pissed. Even more so that she didn't even find out from you, and didn't find out until the next day. You knew she would be angry. Most couples I've heard of who peacefully share finances, have a rule in place that's something like, we discuss any purchase over $100 together first. I would be surprised if she continues to share finances with him after he did this. What an a-hole, to be crystal clear, OP is, not his wife. You're the a-hole here man. She contacted the bank the next day and found out before you could tell her? The next day is far too long to wait and ideally would have been telling her before you did it. Your motivations weren't wrong but your method definitely was. Good luck and good help to your father. And good luck to you making this right with your wife. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for publicly emasculating my husband? So, let me start off with saying that I, 43 female, had a hysterectomy due to cervical cancer when I was 28 years old. We found out when our son was 6 weeks old that I had to have a hysterectomy. My husband, 47, had let it be known to me multiple times that he really wished that we could have another child. This has left me feeling like less of a woman. Now being that I'm 43 years old, I'm very sensitive to being in my 40s. It's very important to me that I am still desirable to my husband to make up for not being able to give him another child. So, I make sure that I stay in shape and follow strict beauty routines to preserve my youthful look for him, no heavy alcohol, no smoking, lots of sunblock and moisturizer along with other daily skin routines, exercising and eating healthy etc. So, this was before COVID, him and I were out with three other couples at a charity function cocktail party. We were all having a conversation, when one of our friends said something about a 70 year old guy at the party with a date that looked like she was in her early 20s which led to an amusing and funny conversation about how some older men chase after the 18 to 20 year olds. I lightheartedly quipped, those older men only go after 18 to 20 year olds, because they think those girls are inexperienced, and that said girls don't know any better. We all had a good chuckle. My husband then goes into Mr. Know-it-all mode and says, well actually, biologically, 
it makes sense that older men go after the younger 18 year olds because their bodies are more fertile and capable of having more children than a woman in her 30s or 40s, our friends know about my history with cancer and how I can't have children. I felt insulted and embarrassed. It made me feel old, barren, past my prime and undesirable at that comment. It also reminded me of my inability to have children. And to me, it sounded like my husband was relating to the old men that lust after fertile 18 year olds. So, I remained poised and collected, although I was shooting daggers with my eyes at him, I said, hmm. I suppose then that the reason why a lot of older women or cougars prefer younger 18 to 20 year old men, because those men are more virile and have more stamina than some guy in his 40s who needs Viagra in order to keep it up. Might I add that my husband needs Viagra and has a prescription for it. Well, on the car ride home, he said I emasculated him. I'm sure I did, but am I the a-hole for it? Edit. I noticed some comments, and I just want to clarify, no one knows he's using Viagra. I did not tell them he's on it. Also, he only mentioned wanting more children in a melancholic way occasionally, for about a year after my surgery. Once, I told him how I'm saying it, and how I feel about the whole subject in general, he felt sorry and apologized and stopped mentioning it to me. Now for the top comments. Info, what the hell kind of marriage is this? Do you two even like each other? Edit, no, this is not what long-term marriages look like. Go get therapy. This sounds like a horrific marriage, honestly. Not the a-hole. No one knows he uses Viagra, right? So your comment was general. But everyone knew you had cancer and a hysterectomy so his comment was personal. I mean, clearly your comment was a bit snippy, but considering his comment, it's understandable. I do think you should consider therapy though. You shouldn't be consumed with trying to make yourself desirable to your husband physically, if he isn't going to reciprocate verbally slash emotionally. Not having a uterus does not make you less a woman, a wife, or a mother. And there's no guarantee that even without your cancer, that you would have had another child. Life happens and your husband needs to roll with it. You are good enough as is, period. Everyone in that conversation now knows he takes Viagra. It doesn't really matter. Everyone sucks here. Everyone sucks here. Your relationship is built upon insecurity from not having two kids. Your husband sounds horrible to have with his views on women and childbearing ages, and he's incredibly wrong. You could have dismissed his statement by using logic against it, but you instead went for a dig. He's your husband, supposed to be one of your best friends, and this ain't it with passive aggressive digs at each other. Fix y'all's communication skills. You shouldn't feel like you have to make up for not being able to have kids. OP's whole. I put so much effort looking hot, cause I can't give him a child attitude, is alarming and disturbing. They need individual therapy to find some self-worth outside of being a trophy wife slash baby incubator. I can understand how that comment would hurt so much when your goals are bearing children and looking sexy. Jesus, I don't ever want to get married. Why the hell are they together? Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not pressing my husband to be more ambitious? I. 48 female and 5 foot 3, are married for almost 23 years with my husband, 47 male, an almost 7 foot tall husky bear who have a heart made of honey, and is the love of my life and the father of our daughter, 21. My husband is a stay at home dad and he nails it, the house is always in a perfect state of cleanness, his food is delicious, his coffee is the nectar of the gods, and he is an extremely talented handyman who can fix or build anything from scratch. I am exactly the opposite when it comes to domestic skills. So for me he is a blessing, and since I have a six-figure paying job, it's not a problem that he stays at home, especially now that I work from home most days of the week, I am in heaven. Since I am the sole provider for both of us, I give him a monthly allowance to be his fun money, and he is more than happy with this because he is a frugal man, and don't have the most expensive hobbies, like he loves woodworking and is very good at it. So after our daughter moved out of the house to go to college in another state, he has been a little bored at home, since taking care of our daughter was what consumed most of his time, and due to complications during my labor we decided to stop at the one kid mark. Pets are out of question because both of us are allergic to fur, so to kill his extra time he got a part-time job at a local store on retail. You should had seen his eyes when he showed me his first paycheck, and said that he would do the same as me, put half on the household account and put the rest on our retirement fund. I almost felt tempted to say to him to keep all the money for himself, but he was looking me with puppy eyes. So I said yes, and secretly increased his allowance. Also, I know the owner of the place and he is more than grateful of having my husband there, 
because he's not only great at interactions with the clients, but also because nobody is stupid enough to scream at a giant polar bear. I think is better if I go to the point now, his dad always gave him crap for him being a stay-at-home dad, even having an engineering degree, degree which has been paid solely by my husband through scholarships, and him working to the bone during college, and that he was a waste, my husband never gave a damn about his father, because his father is a piece of crap who ruined three marriages, including his own, he was having multiple affairs with multiple married women. Long story short, my father-in-law got wind that my husband got a part-time job, and since my husband won't listen to him, he is pressuring me to pressure my husband to get a real job and be a real man. I obviously told him to go suck an egg, but when I talk about this with my friends, they side with father-in-law, and say that is strange that my husband is a stay-at-home dad, and I felt conflicted because I love to have him at home and he is happy being at home, but I also felt that I am holding him back. So, am I the a-hole for not pressuring my husband to be more ambitious? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. So, let's see what we've got here. A wife who clearly adores her husband. A husband who is happy taking care of the home, who cooks, makes great coffee, can build or fix anything, and is not only satisfied with, but proud of his job. A harmonious marriage with no apparent financial problems or disagreements over money, in which both partners willingly contribute what they can to household costs. A daughter who appears to have been successfully raised by loving parents. Do you have any idea how often this kind of scenario shows up in this sub? Literally never. Your father-in-law is an a-hole. Stop feeling conflicted. You're all doing great. I feel like I need to be doing something to mark this occasion. I'll go make coffee. Won't be amazing, but in solidarity at least. Aren't the two of you the sweet eaters together, oh my god, it's to cry for. Would you slash your husband maybe benefit from fostering? No pressure at all. I don't know, but the kids from our street love him, the same can be said about the single mothers of our street. But if they want my hubby, they need to kill me first. I love him a little bit, to be honest with you. It's not a romantic thing, I just want him to make me a coffee and maybe fix something. He would love to do it, he loves help people. The single mothers of my street love to use him as helping hand, but they know that his hands are the only part of him they will ever have. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for keeping my ex-husband's last name after I was asked to change it? I've been married once before, my ex and I were a couple for 9 years and married for 7 of them. We have 3 kids together, ages 11, 8, and 6. I kept my ex-husband's last name after we divorced. We are still friends and it was too much of a hassle to revert to my maiden name, since I'd already graduated college and started my career with my married name. I also like having the same surname as my kids. My ex has never cared before, nor does my current boyfriend. However, my ex recently became engaged to his new girlfriend, together less than a year. I've met her only a handful of times, but she seemed nice enough and my kids haven't voiced any issues with her, which to me is the most important thing. So I was shocked, when out of the blue she contacted me a few days after they announced the engagement, and asked that I revert back to my maiden name. I literally laughed out loud when I read her text, I didn't think she was serious at first but she was. Her reasoning is that, since my ex will have a new wife, it would be wrong for me to keep his name. I essentially told her no freaking way, although a bit more tactful. My ex then called me and asked that I at least consider it, since it's something his fiancé really cares about, and that it's not technically my name anyways. I let him know I wasn't going to go through the headache of changing it again. But if they were so concerned about names, he should take her surname. My ex said I was being petty, and asked me to just please think about it. I would have been happy to end it there, but I got another message from his fiancé which was basically a thinly veiled legal threat about suing me to change my name. I didn't bother to respond to her message, you can't make someone change their name and I'm not concerned about some frivolous lawsuit at all. But I did screenshot what she said and sent it to my ex, telling him his fiancé needs to back the hell off, which he hasn't responded to. My boyfriend also thinks the whole situation is stupid, and thinks I should just tell them both to f off next time they say something. I don't know if I'm being an a-hole though, I get it's not my original name, but it's my professional one, plus my kid's last name as well. I don't know, this whole thing has been so ridiculous. Now for the top comments. I would keep the last name, then change your first name to his, but I am petty as f not the a-hole. I'd say, okay, after you've paid to have all the children's name to be changed to my maiden one. 
not the a-hole. I think your ex-husband understands why you're keeping it, and he seems like a reasonable person, he is just struggling to come to terms with his fiancé's obsessive compulsion to your surname. I think the best thing to do here would just be to blow off the fiancé and ignore her, since her lawsuit won't go anywhere regardless. My aunt kept her ex-husband's last name for like, 13 or 14 years. She changed it to her husband's name when she got married, but it sort of worked out because his last name is the same as ours anyways, so technically she went back to her maiden name. I've never seen the issue with things like these. Same with the hyphen names either. The threat of legal action made me laugh as well. You're opening yourself up to potentially have issues traveling with your children, especially if you ever plan to go abroad if you have a different last name than them. Plus, all the possible ramifications slash annoyances for you professionally, 